One great thing about going to a trade show is you get to hear about things first before they hit the market and you get to directly interact with the manufacturer to ask some questions. I'm here with Lou from Traffic Marin who says he's got two products that takes reefing to a whole different approach, which he's giving me the rundown and I got some pointed questions about this. You're used to that, Lou. Tell me about this phosphate and phosphate dosing. I like the fact that you're holding these questions and not telling me what they are <laughs> until we get started. These two products, Phosphate and Phosphate, really represent a completely new approach to nutrient addition and nutrient management in our systems, all right? We're getting, we're doing it in a more natural way. Let me explain. On a coral reef, those animals are living in a very low nutrient environment. The, the water that they're living in is generally a, a lower nutrient environment. We've seen, though, the result of what happens if you try to run a system in ultra-low <laughs> nutrients. We won't talk about that. Yeah, yeah. And, and I know there's still some fans of ultra-low nutrient approach. Um, personally, I personally am not, but um, um, it, it can be a struggle. Let's just say that much. Sure. Um, why is that the case when these animals are living in a, in, in a low nutrient environment in the natural habitat? It's because it doesn't stay no nutrient, low nutrient. It's okay. because there is a um, kind of a pulsing effect of nutrients for those animals. So what happens is the coral polyps are sitting in this very low nutrient water environment, and then a big school of fish swim by and poops all over the reef. Yeah. Well, what they're doing is, is that they're, they're dropping particulate phosphate, in addition to particulate other stuff, yeah. but lots of particulate phosphates and nitrates right onto the corals. Okay. Not into the water column, not dissolved in the water column, but in particulate form right on the corals. Okay. The corals get a glut of nutrients when that happens. Right. Then when they get those absorbed, then they're back to their low nutrient water column. Okay. okay. What we do in our, in our aquariums is exactly the opposite. Right. We try to add just enough phosphates and nitrates so that we're feeding the good guys, not allowing the bad guys to grow, and we try to keep that at a very constant level, which is exactly the opposite of what the natu natural reef. So now we're gonna dose this stuff. Yes, and we're gonna give it to them in particulate form. Another kind of upside to doing it this way is, how many times have you seen algae growth on rocks because the phosphate was higher inside the rock than in the water column, and so it started to leach out a little bit and you see that algae growth on the rock. Right. Well, that whole interaction happens because of diffusion. Um, if, the, if we keep the phosphates at a certain level, a higher level in the water column, the rocks are going to absorb those phosphates. Right. Then if we drop the phosphate level in the water column and there's a higher phosphate level in the rocks, Reverse. it's going to leach out and right. cause that algae growth. If you're feeding the corals this particulate form <laughs> of phosphate, never goes into the water column. So the rocks never have a chance to absorb it. So if the coral doesn't eat it, it falls onto the rock, your little ball there falls onto the rock. Dissolve. It doesn't it's gonna, dissolve. It's gonna eventually get taken up in a particulate form. So the algae then won't grow on the little ball of... No, because all of this uh, um, uh, acclimation of the phosphate happens before that algae gets a chance. I mean, it's a, yeah, if you took a, a can of this and dropped it in a corner, yes, but okay. um, you're not dosing it like that. You're sprinkling some on and you're, you're raining little phosphate particulates on the reef, okay. and then you're done. So is this more of a target feed or a broadcast feed? Well, it's more of a broadcast feed, but it's broadcasted and it's, it floats around in the water column and eventually settles on the corals. Okay. You're not targeting the coral with it. You're not, you don't have a pipette where you're targeting feeding the corals. Okay. You're broadcasting it, but you know, think about the amount of surface area in your tank, in your mature tank, that um, is covered by corals. A lot. Um, a lot of it, right? right? So as it floats around in the water column, it's going to eventually hit those corals and, and end up as particulate on the coral itself. So I like to start with frags because I like to watch them grow out. Yeah. If I'm starting with little one inch frags, then would I target feed them? Um, I wouldn't, I would still broadcast. Broadcast it. Because okay. you don't have one frag in a 150 gallon tank, you've got a lot of frags. I got two. Yeah, but you have other corals. Just, just in two, tank, right? no, no, just two frags. Two frags in a 150 it. tank? Yeah, I didn't want to do too much. Yeah, in that case, I'd get a smaller tank for those guys. <laughs> <laughs> two products, you also had the Foss Start, which you said 
gets the tank going. Yeah, so there's fast start and then fast feed. Fast start is for starting an aquarium. Okay. And fast feed is for maintaining the phosphates in the aquarium once the aquarium is running. What the fast start does, it's it's just like the fast feed, but it has the addition of some very mild carbon dosing in it, which acts as a prebiotic compound okay. to help grow the good bacteria. Okay. Um, you use the fast start and you get the tank going. And then once you start seeing as will happen in all new systems. I, I, I think you have to be a magician to have it not happen. Eventually, you're going to see the growth of some undesirable stuff at some point. Okay. You're going to start seeing some cyanobacteria, some uh, dinoflagellate, or something that you would prefer not to happen. Sure. That's the signal then to switch over to the phosphine, okay. which is then to maintain it. The other advantage of this system, in my opinion, is that you can get corals into your system a little earlier. Now, if I dose the phosphate, am I going to see my phosphates go up on my no, test kit? No, that's it's not the whole dissolved. point. Um, but it's in a particulate form. So when you're adding a, um, a phosphate product to the tank that is meant to dissolve into the water column, yeah. you're going to see that result immediately. Okay. You're going to put the phosphates in. Uh, two hours later, you're going to test your phosphate level. Your, te your phosphates went up by however many right, right. parts per million. Um, you're not going to see that kind of increase with the phosphine okay. because the whole point is to keep it out of the water column and okay. give it directly to the corals in the form that they want to get it. See, that's the other key thing here. Um, coral polyps have a wonderful mechanism actually for getting nitrates out of the water column. Okay. But the whole reason we carbon dose is because they have a lousy mechanism for getting phosphates, which they need, by the way, much more than they need nitrates. Sure. They have a lousy mechanism for getting phosphates directly out of the water column. We need the bacteria to help them do that. Right. That's why we carbon dose. When you particulate dose the phosphates, yep. you're allowing the coral polyps to get the phosphates through a mechanism that they have that works very well. So can I just add more fish to my tank? I'll get more fish poop and it helps. enjoy, this, get the same benefits and I get more fish? It, it helps. Okay. It helps. There's no doubt about it. I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan. I'm, I'm not a fan of saying you can't have fish in a reef tank. Right. I think it absolutely helps. It does create other issues. Sure. Your fish are also going to urinate in the tank, and that's going to create other issues. If you have too many fish, right. um, you, depending on, it depends on what kind of fish food you're feeding them. So you get into other things. Sure. The basic answer to your question is, yes, it helps. But think about how many fish we have in your average reef tank right. and how much poop that really generates. Right. And think about a huge school of herring or, or some fish, the herring or deep water fish, sorry, but yeah. you know, some, some uh, mullet or something yeah. going over a coral reef, how much poop that generates. It's very different than what we see in our reef tanks. So this is a way to control the dosing of the particular phosphates. It's not going to drive up your phosphates in your tank and it gives the coral the food that we've been largely ignoring, it sounds like. Um, the nutrients. I don't like to actually call it food because we're not really, this doesn't take the place of feeding your corals, okay. but it does give them the ability to assimilate the phosphates that they need okay. in a completely new way okay. that, that is just not being done. And it allows you to keep that phosphate level in your water column a little bit lower than you normally do. So if I have a phosphate higher level of phosphates or a comfortable level of phosphates in my tank, would you still recommend dosing this, feeding yes. the corals? Yes, because the coral polyps still have trouble getting it as a dissolved phosphate out of the water column. Okay. This is a much more effective way for them to assimilate those phosphates. Okay, so if my tank's doing well, I don't have an algae problem, I feel like the colors are okay, would you expect better colorization with this? Here's the thing, I love when people ask me this question about any of our products. So we say, my tank's doing well, um, should I do this? Yeah. Uh, number one, I don't know. Okay. Right? Number two, is it doing well as seven on a scale of one to 10, or is it an eight or a nine on a scale of one to 10? Do we even know what the 10 looks like? Okay. Right? Sure. Um, the problem with some products is that they work, but you don't know where on that scale they're working. Okay. And you look at your reef tank, and your reef tank could look really great could it look better? You I don't know. Are, yeah. There's no way to really know. Um, I say something that you that I think you say all the time, which is 
you have to listen to the tank. Yeah. The tank tells you. I, I talked about this in my, in my workshop yesterday. You need to learn to understand the language of your tank. Yep. And you need to listen to the tank. The tank will tell you. Nobody can tell you what your tank is going to do. No one. I'm a manufacturer, I make a lot of good products. Those products don't work the same in every tank. When people call me and they've got a problem, I ask them a million questions before I recommend any action yeah, yeah. to them. Good. And then I tell them, the only way we're really going to fix this is for you to call me after you do this, yeah. and we talk about what your tank's doing now, then we figure out what the next steps are. Right. There's no silver bullets, there's no pill you put in a tank that's going to be right for every tank. So what I would say is, if you think your tank is doing great, you try a product like this, and then dose it properly for about a month. Sure. If you don't see an improvement in a month, you're probably not going to see an improvement. Okay. If you don't see a detrimental effect of the of the product in your tank in a month, a month is a pretty long period of time for what's going to happen. You're probably going to see it by that time. Corals take a long time to be affected. Mm -hmm. There's very little that we can put in a tank where tomorrow the corals are going to look way better or way worse. Okay. Very little. Sure. Um, there are things, but very little. Right. Um, most of the time when you make a change in the tank, you need to wait a month or two to see what the result of that change is. And the really important thing about that is that you make one change, change not three. <laughs> you make one change, wait those couple of months, see where you're going with it, and then maybe make another change if you, if you want to change something. But it's all about listening to your tank right. and learning the language of your tank and understanding maybe some corals do better, some corals don't. That's your tank telling you we need to change something and it's telling you even what you need to change, right. you just don't have the language down yet. This is definitely a novel approach to Nutrients. increasing coral vitality, yeah. maybe messing with colors as well. Yeah. Got my doubts on it to be honest, but I'm willing to give it a shot in my tank and uh, you know, I'll report back and see what I think. I gotta tell you that the thing I'm looking forward to most is is creating the graphic of the coral reef with the fish pooping as they swim by. <laughs> I've been waiting to give that talk. <laughs> I want to give that talk on the, as a lecture at Magna. All right. Well, I'll do what I can do to try to help you with that, Lou. <laughs> Thanks for the insight. Let me look at this first. Yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you take that with you and All give right. it a try. Hopefully they, uh, I mean, it's kind of a white powder here. Hopefully TSA is not like, oh. What you got? I'm like, try it out. Pack it through. <laughs> Pack it through. <laughs> All right, thanks, Luke.